Good day, everyone. So I am Leilin Weiser Bano, and our paper is titled Plant Parasitic Nematodes Associated with Anona Squamosa L. So we are from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, and my co-authors are Jan Danielle M. Bumanglag, Michael David E. Suleiman, Lourdes V. Alvarez, Carmelita P. Mapano, and Arnel O. Rindon. So we will be presenting our paper in the International Multidisciplinary Research Conference on Current Research Trends 2020. So for the introduction, Anonas Quamosa, locally known as Atis, is a fruit tree that belongs to the family Anonaceae. One of the pests which could affect Anonas Quamosa are the nematodes. So plant parasitic nematodes are among the most important agriculture pests and cause serious crop losses worldwide. Nematodes mostly inhabit the soil and usually attack the underground parts of the plants. That is why the management of nematodes is more difficult than that of other pests. So they are the most abundant group of multicellular creatures on earth in terms of numbers of individuals and about 10% of all nematode species are plant parasites. So today, plant parasitic nematodes are apprehended as major rural pathogens and are known to assault plants and cause misfortunes over the world. So for the objective of the study, the identification of plant parasitic nematodes associated with Anona squamosa and the factors affecting their occurrence has not yet been determined. Hence, this study aimed to identify and determine the genera of plant parasitic nematodes associated with the roots and soil of Anona squamosa based on their morphological characteristics. Another objective is to determine the total count of plant parasitic nematodes found associated with the roots and soil of Atis. And third, determine the pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and texture of the soil where it was planted and identify the relationship with characteristics of the soil with the occurrence of plant parasitic nematodes. So for the materials and methods, different fruit orchards or plantations were surveyed in selected provinces in Luzon and morphological appearance of the host plants were considered before collecting samples. So those ores charts, especially some anona seedlings which seem to have possible nematode infestation because of the symptoms observed such as sclerosis, stunting, and necrosis were the ones which served as a sampling site. The latitude and longitude of the sampling area were also documented for easy tracking. After the area was identified, root and soil sampling was done. For saplings, surrounding soil and roots were dug to around 15 to 20 centimeter depth, and for the fruit trees, 10 samples were obtained from the drip line and dug to 15 to 30 centimeter depth. So part of the soil samples were brought to Bureau of Soil and Water Management for the soil analysis, while most of the roots and soil samples were brought to the laboratory for nematode extraction. So root samples were extracted using 1% concentrated hydrogen peroxide solution and incubated for 48 hours. For the soil samples, Behrman tray technique was used and incubated for seven days. It was sieved and collected. So before killing and fixing the nematodes, frequency counting was done to confirm the infestation of certain plant parasitic nematode species on Anana. So for the killing and fixing of nematodes, water was heated to nearly boiling point, then it was transferred to a flat container where glass bottles and vials were immersed and shaken in a circular manner for about 40 seconds. The glass bottles were removed from the container, then a double strength formalin glycerol fixative with an equal volume of the nematode suspension was poured onto it. After fixation, the glass bottles were left in an undisturbed area for at least 24 hours to let the suspension settle down, as well as to ensure the complete penetration of the fixative. So for the preparation of microscope slides, a ringer was used for each microscope slide. For the picking and mounting of nematodes, Part of the nematode suspension was transferred to a small petri plate, then was observed in a dissecting microscope with understage lighting.
The target nematode was located using the lowest magnification, verified at higher magnification, and picked out using a coconut splinter. Then, the picked out nematode was put at the center of a glass slide with nail polish ring, containing the single strength formalin glycerol mounting medium. By means of a light microscope with understage lighting, the successful transfer of the nematode is confirmed as well as its possible position on the glass slide. So the protocol from sampling to peaking and mounting nematodes first based on the field and laboratory guide for nematodes of Coin et al. So for the morphological identification, the well-mounted plant parasitic nematodes were observed and studied to determine its genus identity. So for the findings, three genera of the nematodes were identified associated with Anona squamosa, and these are Criconemoides, Demiloidogyne, and Rutilenculus. So the collected samples from the sampling site in Teresa Rizal were reddish brown in color and classified as silty clay due to its creamy and soft texture. Nutrient and soil play a very important role not just in plants but also in other living organisms. So as seen in Table 1, the soil samples have low to high nitrogen content, medium to high phosphoric content, and sufficient amount of potassium. It has been reported that pH 7 was significantly better for population increase. It has also been reported that lighter sandy soils are better than heavier clay soils in supporting nematode populations. Criconemoides had the highest count among the other plant parasitic nematodes in the soil samples. However, comparing it with the number of Criconemoides reported in other studies, the count is still low since they are not in their optimum environment which should be in neutral pH with lower temperature. The soil sample in this study has sufficient potassium, which gives rise to the occurrence of nematodes, but because of the type of soil which was heavy in texture, different nematode species have relatively low frequency in terms of their population. Table 2 shows the population count of plant parasitic nematodes found in both soils and root samples. In soil samples, Criconemoides had the highest number, followed by Meloidogyne and Rotilenculus, while in root samples, Criconemoides had also the highest number, followed by Rotilenculus and Meloidogyne. So the counting of plant parasitic nematodes was conducted to determine the assemblage and abundance of plant parasitic nematodes and their association with the soil edaphic factors. Also, this was an attempt to evaluate the occurrence and economic importance of these plant parasitic nematodes associated with Anona squamosa. As reported by Zer, there are around 250 Criconemelias per 100 cubic centimeter of soil on its initial count and around plant parasitic nematodes in 100 cubic centimeter of soil, which create damages on crops. So their result is in contrast with the results of the study since the plant parasitic nematodes found were less than 100 per 100 gram cubic centimeter. So for the conclusions, plant parasitic nematodes associated with Anonas pomosa in Teresa Rizal were Criconemoides, Meloidogyne, and Ritulenculus. Among those, Criconemoides had the highest number followed by Meloidogyne and Ritulenculus. The collected soil samples has an acidic soil which can be affected by the properties and contents of the soil itself such as the moderately low nitrogen, high phosphorus, sufficient potassium, and the texture of the soil itself, which is heavy. The temperature, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium content, and the texture result of the soil shows a relation on the occurrence and count of the plant parasitic nematodes associated with Anona squamosa. These factors serve as a limiting factor to the reproduction and penetrating ability of these plant parasitic nematodes. So thank you very much. and. That's all my presentation. Good day, everyone.